Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Pinterest, um, on uh, Instagram, a variety of places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. So tonight, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Recorder, how I uh, approach Recorder in weeks like two, three, four, because last week I talked about like what I do in that first lesson and sort of got um, through some of those basic procedures. So I want to talk a little bit about um, specifically how I do like uh, echoing and getting kids to sort of um, hear me and match me. So that's coming up in just a second. Um, if you hear about anything, a, a resource, a, a manipulative, a, an instrument you're really interested in, um, I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to the things I talk about in these videos. I call it the links page. Um, you can find it by clicking on the caption wherever you're watching and listening to this, or you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org and click the video tab. Also, there's a Facebook group. If you want to join the Facebook group and uh, continue this conversation after the video is over, you can. The Facebook group is Every Moment Matters Music Education Community, and you can um, connect there and uh, continue this conversation after this is over. So it's not just me talking to my phone and computer, and it can be, <laughs> in fact, people talking back. But also, feel free to leave comments in the comments as we go, and I, um, I'll try and react to those in real time, but also come back to them if I can't. So if you have a question about something specifically along the way, that's a great, um, add, a, add a comment, uh, add a question in the comment section. Okay, uh, one more thing. If you don't want to just see me through your phone, computer, uh, podcast, what, however you are accessing this content, if you want to see me in person, I'm going to be at the Greater Augusta Orff Chapter in Augusta, Georgia this weekend, March 23rd, um, for a workshop there. You can find um, in more information about that on my Facebook page or on my blog. Um, and also on uh, in like two-ish weeks, um, on April 6th, I'm going to be at First Iowa Orff Chapter, and that is um, in Cedar Falls, Iowa. And uh, so if you're around that area, I'm going to be doing a workshop there. You can find, again, information about that on my blog or on my Facebook page. Okay, so last week um, we talked about recorder. Um, and we talked about, like, what I do in the first week. And actually I used, like, my my student recorder that I had, like, the, the – the clear see-through one. If you're going to continue on and learn and uh, do ORF levels, things like that, I suggest you get a little bit nicer recorder for yourself. When I'm doing it with students, I try and typically use the recorder that they are using so they feel like, hey, Mr. Rao is using my recorder too. But there's some really um, nice recorders um, that you can get that are slightly better quality that you can use, especially when you're trying to learn yourself and get the best tone you can. Um, and so, oh, I forgot to link the soprano one, but um, I linked my tenor on the links page in case you're interested, but you can also um, find the soprano one. Um, I will link that too. There are, there are a couple different versions you can use. There's one that's like uh, yellow and like made out of corn starch or corn byproduct. And then there are these other ones. There's like the brown boring one that I have currently in my hand. And then there's also, oh my gosh, I think I have it right here actually. Um, Oh my gosh, I do. Okay, this one is the uh, YRS312B, and this one's fancy because it has, ooh, get ready for it, the wood grain. Ooh, okay, you can't really see it in the video, but it's very nice. And then the one that I have in my hand, the like boring-ish one, um, is the YRS302B. Is that what I just said? No, 302 and 312, one is like wood grain and one is just brown. But they're very nice, um, and so if you're going to continue on and do ORF levels, like some people are talking about in the Instagram comments right now, you should get yourself a nicer recorder. Speaking of ORF levels, I'm doing two ORF levels this summer. Not ORF level two, two different ORF levels. One is level one um, in uh, Central Florida with the Central Florida ORF chapter in Orlando, and the other one is the, at the University of Missouri St. Louis in St. Louis. And I believe there are spots in both of those classes still available if you want to come and do level one with me and friends um, this summer. Okay, so uh, what do you do when you're trying to get um, the kids to get started? So uh, last week I talked about how you can like work on tone, how you can get them to sort of um, get started echoing, doing things like that. So um, when kids come in for like the second day or a little bit later on in um, that first class, I try to do some echoing. So like I'll take my recorder and I'll play and I'll have them echo and I'll say, I'm just gonna do just B and remember B is thumb and one. And um, I don't ever have, st I don't ever mirror students. I always, ha I, 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 you know, last week I talked about, I wear a little band on my left hand. I call it the left hand band, it's just a little bracelet thing. And um, I, I say, your left hand always has to be on top. That's why we wear a left hand band. Remember that your left hand's on top. 
So when they look at me, they see my arm with my band on, on top. And so even though some kids try and put their right hand on top, I always say, you know, you can't mirror me. I like make a big deal about that, reminding them. So they know they're going to be sort of the opposite of me, which I think is totally fine. So I'm going to say, um, I'm just going to do B, which is thumb and one, and I'm going to play and you get an echo. And I would do patterns like this. That's all. Simple, simple. Easy peasy. You know, just like basic, basic rhythms. And then just to mix things up a little bit, I might say, okay, great. I'm going to say it. You play it. B, 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 B. And they'd go. And then I might say B, 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 B. Okay, so um, in the first the first couple examples, there's very, very simple rhythms, short rhythms, no more than four beats, and I let them echo me. Why not longer rhythms? Why not more complex rhythms? Well, we haven't really dealt with tonguing yet. We haven't really done with um, uh, good articulation. So uh, I just, I'm going for really simple. I also just want them to get really comfortable with hearing me and echoing me with very simple, simple patterns before I try and make it any more complex. And then um, I'll do something like, okay, now I'm going to do A. And remember, A is thumb, one, and two. You don't take off your first finger. In fact, fourth graders, guess what? This whole time you're playing, basically this whole year, you are never going to take your thumb and your first finger off. You, we could glue them on. And it would be basically the same. So anyway, so I say don't take off your first finger, just add on your second finger. Okay, let's try some rhythms. And it's the same thing. I give them really basic patterns. You know, super simple. That's even more complex than I would do. I don't really do anything that's like syncopated or anything. I don't know why I just played that. Sorry. Okay, let me try another one. And then again, I might say, I'm going to say you play it A, 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 A. And they play A, 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 A. And they play. And then I'll say, okay, I'm not going to say A, but I want you to only play A. I'm not going to say, I'm going to say something else. But you see if you can figure out how to play it. Ta, 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 di, ta. And then on A, they play. Right, like so super simple. Um, now, after a couple examples of that, and then we might go to G, we might, and then I say, okay, fourth graders. I don't know if I told you though this story last week, but I'll tell you, tell it again. Anyway, fourth graders, I, you're, you sound great, but you know what? I noticed the other day there was a fifth grader and he just sounded fantastic. And you know how some of us kind of sound like this, which is not bad. It's a good start. It's the first day. Okay. It, but he sounded different. He sounded like this. Ooh. It's so clean. Ooh, the tone, it sounds so nice. It's like separated and fun. I'm like, listen again. Ooh, and here's what it was before. Which is like fine. But it, he sounded so clean. And I said, what are you doing? How are you getting this nice, clean sound? What's happening? What's ha how, do you, how are you doing that? And he said, Mr. O, you're not going to like the answer. And I said, no, no, no. I want to tell all my fourth graders exactly what you're doing. How are you making such a nice sound? What is it you're doing? And he said, I, you're not going to like the answer. And I said, well, what's the answer? And he said, well, you have to think of doo-doo. And I said, no, I don't like that answer, but tell me more. And he said, you have to think of doo-doo. When you are playing in your mouth, instead of just going and blowing, you have to go doo-doo-doo-doo-doo. Now, you're not actually saying doo-doo-doo, because listen, if you say, if you actually say do you can hear my voice and you can hear the recorder and you don't want my voice. So instead of actually saying do, we're just, what our, when our tongue, when it does that sound do, it goes do, do, and the tongue kind of comes to the front of the mouth and it almost hits your teeth. Do, do, do. And so you're not really going to say do, 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 which thank goodness, I don't want everybody saying do, do all over the time, but, but do, do, but you're just going to do, 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 as you play. And that's what, that's what the fifth grader told me is say doo-doo. So anyway, well, let's try saying doo-doo. Think about doo-doo as you play. And the kids think that it's like hilarious that I'm even going there. Because number one, they're like, ha-ha, it's like a little kid joke, but also like you're allowing us to say it. So like they, they love it for both reasons. Anyway, so we say do, 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 and then um, we do examples. And it does immediately change the tone for some kids. Other kids, they need to keep practicing and they need more time. But the more I say think about do, do, the better their tone is. And again, like I said, some kids are going to vocalize and go do, 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 
and you want to stop that. And so you say, like, don't actually say the word. We're just thinking the word in our head as we play. Okay, so that's one thing that we uh, that we do just to, to get a better articulation, better sound. And to I, I don't spend a lot of time talking about where your tongue is in the mouth or all of that. I think a combination of the visual, like the, the thought, the visual idea, not visual really, but like the idea, this, this um, what's the word, example of, of thinking do, this thing the word do, gets their, some of their tongues to do it. And then also talking about, okay, your tongue is touching the back of your teeth. I don't spend a lot of time doing that um, because it makes me think of when I was in college and I was doing voice lessons and my voice professor just kept saying like, lift your soft palate, lift your soft palate. And that's all he said. And I was like, okay. And then another voice teacher later on was like, think about yawning. And then it was like, boom, got it. So I try and do a little bit of both, but I don't want to like stick with just like, Ooh, use your tongue, blah, blah, blah. Because for some kids that does not resonate. Some of them need to think do, do, do the, the do that really does it for them. Other kids, we just keep trying, but that's, that's a, an example of something we do. So that we do. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> um, so I do B's, A's and G's, just basic echoing. And then I say, okay, now, now I'm going to make it tricky. Now I'm not going to do just one note. Now I'm going to do two. Okay, so, but here's the thing. Um, I'm going to make it easy for you. I know I say it's tricky, but I'm going to make it easy for you. I am going to start on A. And at some point, I'm going to switch to B. I'm going to start on A and I'm going to switch to B. Here's an example. Can you hear when I switch to B? Can you see when I switch to B? In fact, I have a quick, okay, quick quiz. Just raise your hand when you hear me switch to B. And the kids are like, they hear, you know, they hear it. And some of them are looking and they see my fingers. And I say, I'm not going to try and go like B, A, A, B, B, because you don't want to take your fingers all the way off. You don't want to lift them super high in the air. It's like flicking water off of your finger. I don't want that. My fingers are going to come up just a little bit. So some of you may not see when my finger comes up, but you should be able to hear it. Let's try again. Did you hear it? Did you see it? Could you tell? Okay, great. And so I do several examples where they're just, they're raising their hand when they hear me switch from A to B. And then to quiz them, I say, okay, I, I tried once of saying like, everybody close your eyes, doesn't work. So instead I walk to the back of the room and I say, now you can't see me. Now you have to listen. Raise your hand again when you hear me switch from A to B. And sometimes I'll do longer examples. And they'll, they'll like, ooh, then, they'll, then they really, it's not a sh super short amount of time, so they have to listen a little bit harder. It's a different kind of listening because they're really listening for a, through a longer example. But I only switch from A to B, and I only switch once. It's not like I go A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. No, it's like one time switch. But I move to the back of the room so they cannot physically see my hand move. They can only hear it. And then, of course, I have them echo me. And I say, okay, I'm going to play, and at some point I'm going to switch from A to B, and you get to do it too. I'll go first. I give them really, really easy examples. Super, super simple, super, super easy. Again, just going from A to B. And then after, I don't know, five, six, seven examples, I'll say, now... I wonder if we can go the other way. A to B is easy. B to A is a little trickier because you got to drop your finger on. And since B never comes off, that's easy to go from A to B. It always stays there. But to make sure you always drop in the right place, that's tricky. So let's do some finger push-ups first. Okay, B, A, B, A, B, A. And push-ups is just you're holding B and A and you're just lifting your third finger off, off or sorry, your second finger off. You're, so your thumb and your first finger are still stuck on the recorder and push-ups is just moving up and down and up and down and up and down to give them the sensation of dropping their finger in the right spot. Okay, so we do some push-ups where they can look, they can see, they can check. And if they've got those see-through recorders, it's really easy for them to see through to see if they're covering the hole or not, or they can turn the recorder around and look. Now, we do a couple of those and I say push-ups, but now you're going to be in practice position where your recorder mouthpiece is on your chin, so now you can't just turn your recorder to look. Now you have to look down or not look at all and try and make sure that you're still dropping. So let's try it again. B, A, B, A, B, A. We do lots of examples of that. And then maybe um, we play a couple um, where we go back and forth. But then I say, okay, now you got to listen. I'm going to play. You got to echo me. And I'll say, now I'm not going to go from A to B. I'm going to go from B to A. Listen to it. Some kids, they hear it, boom, easy peasy. Other kids, they're watching me. 
and they don't hear it right away, but they 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 are close. Then I'll, you know I'll do several examples of that, and then I'll move to the back of the room again to force them to listen, and so they they can't look at me, so they're they're forced to hear the answer. Now something that can really really help is if you switch to tenor. So if I'm switching to tenor, for some kids, just the the drop in the register really really helps because the tenor is just an octave lower. Um, so I'll say, okay, I'm going to play. And, and, and if you want them to see your fingers moving, a tenor is really great because when your fingers are, are close together for a soprano, it's easy to miss movement, but on tenor, it's not so easy because your fingers are spread out. It's much, 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 much easier. Um, I just confused myself. I said, it's not as easy to miss the movement. Okay. So but basically what I'm saying is on a tenor, it's easier to see when your fingers move. Okay. So, um, I'll do examples on here. And they, again, the drop in the register really helps them hear it and they can see your fingers just a little bit easier. So um, it's fun to do this example with them going back and forth again, just from B to A or A to B using the tenor as well. Um, and I'll also go to the back of the room so they can't just see, so they're forced to listen. So then obviously we're gonna start, we'll do the same thing, but do um, A and G and G and A. We'll do the same thing. And then eventually, eventually, maybe not in this first day, but eventually maybe I'll do patterns where I do B, A, and G. This is for my earlier kids. For my fifth graders, it's like day one. I'm like, okay, I'm going to play. You got to listen, try and echo. I'm only using three notes, B, A, and G. But for my younger kids, for my, for like first day or maybe the second day, I'll do super simple patterns and only make like one change this first couple times. Okay, so then I could also say, now I'm not going to play it. I'm going to speak it and you have to play it. Okay, let me try it. A, A, B, 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 A, A, B, B. So I'll do very simple patterns and I'll only do like easy, simple switches and then I'll maybe get to more complex. B, B, A, A. Maybe by the end of our patterns, I'll do A, B, A, B. But you're not going to hear me doing like A, B, A, G, A, B, A. No, no, nothing crazy like that. It's going to be mostly just two notes and only one switch. I probably wouldn't even do like A, A, B, A. If I'm going to switch up to, from one note to another note, I'm going to stay on that note. I'm not going to go like A, B, A, B. I'm just going to do like A, A, B, B. So they have very, very simple, easy examples these first times. Because you're setting a baseline. And then once they are able to do that, then you can go back and do some more. Okay, so um, super, super, super simple. Now, um, I sometimes play a little game with them. And um, when, when we get to the point where we're ready to switch like B, A, and G, when we're able to play all three notes at once, um, I'll say, okay, I'm going to play. We're going to do all three. It's going to be so simple. I'm going to start on G, and it's going to go G, A, B. Now, if you have your fingers down, that's thumb, first, second, and third finger. That's G. If you're going to A, you just lift up your third finger. If you're going up to B, you just lift up your second finger. And remember, you never take off your thumb and first finger. We could glue them down on your on your hand and you'd be fine this whole year. I'm not going to do that because you need your hand for other stuff. But uh, you could just, you, you don't want to take your recorder everywhere. But you could probably just glue those fingers down because you, you're, ne you're never going to take them off in fourth grade. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so then we'll go and I'll say, okay, now I'm going to play and you get to echo. I'm going to start on G. I'm going to end on B. Figure out when we switch. Here I go. And I have them echo and then I do another one. Okay, I'm going to start on G. I'm starting on G. Okay, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to start on G. And then maybe I'll throw in like a trick. I'll be like, There was a rest in there. Did you get it? Let me just try it again. Ooh, how exciting. Okay. Oh, are you thinking about doo-doo? Think about doo-doo because I heard some people go. And we really want it to be. You want to think about doo-doo. Remember, think about doo-doo because doo-doo is going to help you get a really nice sound. Doo-doo. You know what doo-doo gets you? Beautiful tooting. We really want good tooting on these recorders. In fact, I have a book called Tuneful Tooting. And so you want toot, because we're tooting on these recorders. And that's another joke that they like freaking love. And they're like, is he saying tooting? And anyway, it's it's funny because like, it's like below them as far as humor, but it's also like me bringing it up and like <laughs> saying it on purpose is silly for them. Anyway, so um, and then we do G-A-B. Eventually I might do, I'll, I'll, I'll switch to B-A-G. 
very, very, very simple patterns. And then we'll get to a game where I, it's called the special pattern. When you hear the special pattern, you get to play. And what are you going to play? When you hear the special pattern, you're going to play this. B, A, G, G. I'll even write it on the board. Ta, 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 ta with a B, with an A, with a G, with a G. When you hear the special pattern, you get to play. What is the special pattern? It is ta, 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 di, ta. Because if I get, if I do too complex of a crazy thing, they're not going to hear it. If I do too, too crazy of a pattern, they're not, uh, I'm going to forget what it is. So if I, if my crazy pattern was like, ta, ka, di, mi, ta, ka, di, mi, ta, di, ta. Well, first of all, I can't play that on the recorder and have a nice sound at like nine in the morning. But um, also if I, if it's too complex, they won't really hear it. Or if I say, oh, if you hear B, A, G, A, B, A, G. No, I, I want to give them a super simple rhythm to listen for and, um, and make it easier on myself. So guess what? When you hear the, the magic pattern, ta, 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 di, ta, you get to play. Now the magic pattern could sound like this. Did you hear ta, 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 di, ta? It could be this. That's ta, 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 di, ta, but all on A. Listen to this. That's ta, 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 di, ta, but all on G. Or it could be this. That's ta, 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 di, ta, but it's B, A, G, G, G. So no matter where it is, no matter how it happens, when you hear the magic pattern, you get to respond with, Okay, great. Let's try it. I'll play. If you if you if you hear the magic pattern, you get to play B A G G. Okay, here I go. And of course, the first pattern I play is not the magic pattern, and some kids will play. And they'll try and do the response, and I'm like, uh uh uh, that was not the magic pattern. That was a trick. Let me try another one. And most of them can identify that as not at all the magic pattern. Again, I have the rhythm written out of the board so they can like follow along and tr and, and verify that I'm doing it correct. And then I'll give them I'll give them a chance. Right, so then they get a playback. So all the while they're sitting there with their recorder, they're trying to be quiet. And this is tricky for them too because they're trying to be quiet and not blow into the recorder and also listen. Okay, so then I'll do I'll get a little bit more tricky. Ooh, they hate that one. Ta 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 di ta di. Ooh, because it's like so close, and it's the end that I met. I mess them up. Did, was that the magic pattern? Ta di. It was. Okay, so so we play through a couple of examples of that. Maybe on another day, I'll change their response instead of like B A G G. Maybe their response can be B B A A G. G, you know, something different, but it gives them something to listen for and it gives them a chance to, they know they get to respond super, super easy, um, but they have to listen and it makes it a little tricky. So this also is getting them prepared for, I'll play something, you play this other response thing. I play something, you play this response. Because eventually, I don't know if you remember, but last week I talked about, I started with the song, circle left, do, 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 circle left, do, do, circle left, do, do, shake those Simmons down. Because eventually the kids are gonna hear me go, and they're gonna get to go, that's not in this lesson, but this, this activity prepares them for that, that when they hear a special thing or they hear the right timing, they get to come in and chime in with their song or with their special piece or their, you know, whatever their response. So this gives them something to listen for to sort of prepare them. So again, I, I will, at the beginning of these activities, I'll do this exact thing, but I'll stand in front of them toward a little bit later on. I'll move around the room. I'll move somewhere else. I'll sit down. I'll stand behind them. So they're not just watching me so that they are listening because I, I I know that a lot of kids like to watch and that does help them and for a, a long time I let them watch I don't mind but uh, towards the end I know that they need to work on their listening their oral skills and so I will move away so that they cannot look at me anymore and cannot use it as a crutch one more thing you could do for the magic pattern instead of just any ta 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 di ta you could specify you could say b b b b b you could say B, B, A, A, B, you could, whatever you want to do. If you think they have the oral skills of being able to hear that specific pattern. But 
that becomes very tricky. So I don't know that I would do that in the first day, but maybe later on with the game as you go. It's a really fun, like a warm up thing. Once you've done it once, they can they can handle doing it um, with other stuff. But it's a it's a fun song to get started on. Okay, these are just a couple things that I do to have like to do echoing back and forth um, for basic basic rhythms. To it it gives them lots of repetition. It helps them work on their tone. It helps them especially to listen and to, and then also because it's not just play 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 and they're listening to my example and if I'm playing it well they're hearing a good example of what the recorder should sound like over and over and over. They're hearing my example. They're hearing my repetition and so they're not just hearing other people go. You know, they're they're able to to um, to 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 hear just my example on its own. Another thing you could do so that they can hear themselves slightly better is you could say, OK, I'm going to do magic pattern. But this time only this side of the room gets to play when this time everybody else just sit and listen. And if you hear it, you can go. But don't 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 let them know. It's like it's like a game like you don't want them to know. You just you're this is like practice for you. So like maybe if you hear the magic pattern, you like tap your shoulder or something so that you know that you heard it and, and like I know, but then they are still listening. Okay. So, but then all, what that does is it, oh, it creates competition, but also it means that kids who are playing, now only half the class is playing and they're able to hear their tone better on their own. And these first couple classes for recorded players, it's really hard because they're trying to emulate a good sound but they don't know what that sounds like and also they don't know what they sound like because they're playing with literally everyone else and it's just like a blast of sound so to help them it's fun to also like sort of slim down the group that's playing so they can hear just a little bit better themselves compared to me the example the teacher okay these are just a couple examples of like what you can do if you want to echo to give them some stair steps some scaffolding along the way to give them ideas as they go more coming soon. If you like hearing recorder content, recorder ideas, please leave a comment, send me a message, something so that I know like, hey, keep doing recorder. But if you're like, no, I do not want to hear any more of that terrible instrument. I'm not a fan or whatever. I don't know. Maybe you love recorder. I like recorder. I think it's fun and important for kids, but I know everybody has different opinions. So if you um, want to hear more recorder, please let me know and I will do a couple more videos about recorder. Okay, um, I'll see all of y'all next week, unless you're in Georgia, 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 unless you're in Georgia and you want to come to the Greater Augusta Orf Chapter Workshop this weekend on Saturday, March 23rd. It's going to be so amazing. Um, but if I don't see you then in Georgia, <laughs> the Greater Augusta Orf Chapter, um, I hope I'll see you all next Monday for another Musical Mondays video. Have a great week with your kids and I'll see you later, everyone. Bye.